Hey, thanks for watching. This is going to be a quick video showing how to make a list of professional references for a job application. So the first thing people ask is, should I include references on my resume itself? Generally, the answer here is no, unless it's specified in the job posting. The only exception here might be if you have zero work experience and you're just looking to beef up your resume and make sure that it has everything that a hiring manager will need. Next thing you might ask is, well, who should I include in my list of references? Generally, what you're looking for here is people you've worked with and had a positive working relationship with. Ideally, you want people who you either reported to or, you know, the next level up your boss's boss. But if you don't have that, if you don't have work experience, you can always include coaches, teachers, professors. Really, you're just looking for anyone who is going to vouch for you, say that you're a hard worker, and give a good impression to that hiring manager. Now, an exception there, don't put your mom as a reference. She's obviously going to talk you up, but it's also your mom. So then you might ask, well, how do I ask someone to be a reference for me? It's kind of a weird conversation, but it doesn't have to be. Everybody's applied to a job. Everybody has probably given references. So you just have to ask these people, you know, if they're willing to be a reference for you. And if so, that's great. Give them a little bit of context about the job you're applying to. And what that's going to do is help them understand how to best support you in this job application. And then you might ask, what should my list of references look like? And for that, we jump over to a word processor. In this case, Word. All right, cool. So we're over here in Word. Um, now I'm using Microsoft Word. If you don't have Microsoft Word, you could follow similar steps in Google Docs. If you don't have Google Docs and you're just sending this in an email, you know, follow the same content here, but you don't have to follow the same format necessarily. This is just a format I like to use. So the first thing you're going to do is insert a table. So you come up to insert, go to table, and all you need is a two by one table. So two columns, one row. And in this left column, you're going to put your name. And then in this right column, you're going to put your contact information. So if you come to this layout up here, you want this to be right aligned on the bottom and actually this one should be left aligned on the bottom and here you're going to put your phone number your email and if you choose to you can put your address here too um, if you're applying out of state you might avoid putting this here it's not super necessary anymore but i like to include it just for demonstration Cool. And then come over here, highlight your name and click the home tab here. And you're just going to bump this font size up and make it bold. Click the B there. And just, you know, not crazy huge, but a decent size. And then click outside the table or click just below the table. Come down and write professional references and here highlight the table and click this drop down and just say is the borders drop down say no borders oh one more thing you might want to do just to make it align right highlight the table again and go up to there's this table design and this table layout here go to the table layout click cell margins and just knock it down to zero everywhere because we're not doing some huge data table. There's no need for spacing and this will make things line up better. Perfect. Okay, so you've written professional references. You can add some more space here if you want to, doesn't matter. Come down after that and you're gonna insert one more table. And here it's gonna be another two column table, but this time, Basically do as many rows for each reference that you're putting. So here, I'll, for demonstration purposes, we'll just do four. So again, we're gonna come here, 
come to the table layout tab, knock these margins down to zero. So one more thing just to kind of separate the document. If you highlight professional references here and come up to this border dropdown and add a bottom border, that's just going to kind of separate the document. And then you also want to bump the font size up here, probably to about a 14 or 16. And then in this table, what we're doing is we are adding our references in the left column. And then I'll show you what we do in the right column here. So um, you, your right column is going to be a little bit wider. So you can drag this, this middle um, separator over to the left like I just did between the columns. And what you're going to do is write the person's first and last name. The next thing you're going to want to write is their job title and the company that they work at. And under that, the hiring manager will need some way to contact them. So typically you just put phone number and email. And then I like to highlight the first and last name of the person just for formatting purposes. Makes it kind of stand out a little better. So now what do we put over in this right column? Well, you have to remember this hiring manager is basically flying blind. They don't know who this person is or they likely don't know who this person is and they don't know your relationship to them or why they're listed as a reference so I like to use this right column just to give a little bit of context there so that when they call this person or email this person they understand uh, what that working relationship was so typically that's just gonna look like you know one to two sentences briefly describing that relationship Okay, so I've went ahead and filled out the other ones here just to let you know what this is going to look like. All right, so before we move forward, um, there's some formatting things we need to take care of. So these are obviously all a little scrunched together. So there's a couple different ways you could solve that. You could either, you know, hit enter below each one and space them out that way. Or uh, you could highlight the whole table. Again, come to the table layout go into the cell margins and make the top and bottom on each one like a tenth of an inch. You can see that added a little bit of spacing. So that looks fine. We'll go ahead and keep that. Another thing you're going to want to do is just get rid of the borders here. I like to keep them there when I'm working on the table. It makes it a little easier. You can either do that in this table design tab here with the borders drop down or while you have it all highlighted come to home and hit the borders drop down. Either way you're going to select no border. So you can see that I got rid of it for all of my references here and now each one is kind of standing on its own. Okay so I'm going to update one of these descriptions just so you have an example of what an actual description might look like on a list of references. Cool, so you can see I filled this one out. This is Jane Doe. She was my shift supervisor when I worked at McBurgers. Uh, this is her contact information. And I just wrote that Jane was my direct supervisor at McBurgers for three years. She trained me when I was a new hire and I learned a lot from her and eventually started training new hires myself. So this gives the hiring manager just a little bit of context to go off of, which is great. All right, perfect. So hopefully that was helpful for you to get a list of professional references put together. I wish you the best of luck in your job hunt. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe. It does a lot to help support this channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.